I'm Demetrius Hall and welcome back to an episode of Speed Ass Garage. On this episode, we're gonna install the camshaft bearings in my LQ9. Wow! I decided to go with these seal power bearings and my motor, or this motor here, it's a six liter LQ9. I wanna say it came out of a 2004. So um, a lot of time with these cam bearings is Russian roulette. I decided to say, hey, you know what? I got the second generation cam bearings come in different sizes or different outside diameters um, based on the year making model of your vehicle or the year making model of the daggone motor that comes out of the vehicle. And uh, in this case, it gives you the part numbers and it's telling you the position of each one of these deals. When you open them up, they're all organized one through five. Um, the good thing about seal power is they put the, the breakdown right there and then they also scribe it or whatever they do to, to imprint it into this daggone uh, bearing on the outside so that you don't mismatch match um, these bearings. So just like anything else, you have to have a specific tool in order to install these cam bearings. And this is the tool that we're gonna be using. Wow, this tool here is the cam bearing tool for not only LS, but a multiple different vehicles or motors with the LS engine. It's the loud number part number 18000. In case you was wondering, I've also seen one on eBay that's supposedly um, a great uh, a great tool to use to change out cam bearings, but we got to borrow this one from uh, Underground Racing. It comes with the instructions that if you can't figure it out, if you ain't watched enough YouTube videos, you definitely need it. It's right there. And then of course, we're gonna need a 22 millimeter. So let's, let's go ahead and get this tool set up real quick. And then we're gonna take out um, the last two cam bearings. I've already took out three to test the tool out, but we're gonna use this tool to take out um, the last two. Let me show you how we're gonna knock it out. So depending on what you're working on, you're gonna need to use one of these dies. The way this die is designed, outside of it is rubber. When you tighten up on it, it expands it almost like a pipe expander. You got one, two, three, four, and five. We're gonna be using four and it's gonna be a washer and then the threaded section is gonna screw into this side. So let's go ahead and transfer it to the motor. All right, so the, the rubber side needs to go into the bearing that we're trying to take out. So it'll sit in there like that. And then I got the rod snaking it through, through the front. Screw it on. Then you take the 22. The 22 is gonna go on that side of the nut. Sometimes you can hold it by hand. And what you want to do is you want to turn that shaft till it get tight, just like that. And then what you want to do is get you a four pound hammer. Make sure that cone is on there. That cone is designed to keep everything centered. You want to keep the back part of your hand against the cone at the same time grabbing this joker. And then you want to take this four pound hammer and treat this joker like a pendulum, meaning that you hold it at the top. And that go to bearing right there. Push the bearing right on out. And this is a good reason why you change out cam bearings. That mug is wiped out all the way to the brass material. And like in my case, I think that that's what I was getting as far as that glitter in the oil before everything blew up. I think it was coming from these cam bearings. So let's go ahead and knock out the last one. All right, to install these new cam bearings, we got two things we gotta do. We gotta make sure that we put the right one in the right orientation in the block. And then for two, we gotta make sure that we line these holes up with the holes inside of the block. Um, in this case, um, it's got like a hole right there. It's more like an oval style hole. We gotta make sure that we line this thing up. A good thing that GM made that hole um, a little bit bigger than what it should be that way in case you don't miss it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my Sharpie marker and I'm gonna mark a line on the inside of the bearing where that hole is so that I can know exactly where I'm um, lining my stuff up and I ain't got nothing to worry about. It's got two holes so I can use whichever one I please. I'm gonna draw a line on both of them. I don't want no problems. So now we're gonna start with installing 
on um, our first bearing. Uh, we're gonna do this on number one. Cam bearings number one and number five are identical. And remember, you got that daggone part number right there. That's what you wanna look at. So snake the tool through, slide it over top of this rubber tool or this rubber piece or whatever. Turn this nut to expand it, snug it down. Yeah, I don't, that don't look right. Hold on. All right, I just went back and glanced at everything. It just looks so tight. Like this bearing looks like it's too big to go in, but it looks like it's, I guess that's just the same diameter as the outside. I'm um, also making note, I put this black washer piece on there. I'm assuming that that piece need to be, it came with two pieces. Anyways, the bigger one looked like it fits up against the back of this flush so it don't move. And I'm assuming that that is gonna get the job done. We're gonna find out how big of a pain in the butt this thing really is. But uh, I'm about ready to start slamming on this thing. It's the moment of daggone truth. We're gonna find out if I gotta order some more. Yeah, no wonder why jokers pay the machinists to do this. I just used my outside micrometer and measured the outside of these bearings. This is the old one and then that's the new one. Uh, I'm gonna have to go into Rock Auto and double check. I think I might have the old design. This is the original bearing that, that came out of, uh, of my motor, LQ960. It's like a 04 bot, I think it was a 04. Yeah, roughly two, three. 233 three. so I'm just in somewhere around the 233 three range and yeah and this one's like the 35 range 235 233 three. so I need to find a 233 three, and I don't even I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if that even it's got to be something but I don't even know what it's from though hold on I was getting three three two two and it looks like uh, we got a 326, a 328. So it looks like I have the first first design, which is a CH, CX, CH10. So that's what I got to order. All right, Speed Ass Garage, um, a week has passed and we're right back where we left off at, which is uh, trying to get these cam bearings installed. I don't know how much in detail I was on the past deal, but this is the part number that I got before. Um, evidently, there are considered three different uh, cam bearing generations based on the year making model of your GN3 or GN4 motor. Um, I picked out this part number <clears throat> the first time, which is actually the GN2 or second generation of cam bearings. Um, my motor came out of a 04, but come to find out, once I removed uh, one of the old cam bearings, um, I numbered which one is which because it matters. So for example, I numbered number five, number five and number one are the same diameter. I took this and I measured the outside diameter. And um, in our case, even though the car or the motor came out of a 2004, um, I can bearing was actually a CH10, which is the part number CH10, which is 97 to 03. Um, so everybody know the LS stuff. I mean, even around 04, 05, you got a mismatch of rods, pistons, where evidently it's the same thing with cam bearings. <clears throat> so these are no longer needed. And these are the right ones. These are the Durabond. And uh, that's the part number, CH-10, meaning that this is for a 97 to 2003 LS block. I already installed one just because I wanted to make sure I did it right. So let's go over what I did to make this happen. Again, we open up the box. All these camshaft or GM camshaft bearing boxes are the same, meaning that they tell you exactly what's the position that you need to have your cam bearing. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You got five locations for cam bearings to go inside of the block. So this bearing and this bearing, which is considered one in five, is that uh, the middle one which is number three, is obviously in the middle. And then like I said before, you got part numbers to let you know uh, which one is which in case you happen to be clumsy and drop this whole box on the floor. Second, I draw me a nice little line to identify where the hole is at. I use something like a Sharpie. I do inside and out. Um, it's already 
spoken about over YouTube, you got two holes, it don't really matter. Just use one of them. The next thing I do is after I get the appropriate die, I draw a little line right there and then also draw a line at the face of it so I can see it through the bore. I don't know if you can tell, but look at the top left hand side, I took my paint pen and drew a nice little yellow dot. That's the upper left. That lets me know where the hole is. And what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna have to do this inside of the block is I basically slide it over top of there. I line those two holes up and then I go a step further and I hit the outside of the bearing and the inside of the board with a little bit of that baby butt jelly. So let's install our first bearing on camera. Slide this tool through the front. Clock my bearing so that it goes in there. Slide it over top of the line that I got lined up, which is, golly, this block is sharp, man. I probably just got some blood on my hand. Put my wrench inside of there, tighten up on this thing, try my best not to move my line orientation. That should be tight enough. Get that KY, put it on the, the beginning face, the part of the bearing that's gonna go in. Then I'm also gonna rub some of this stuff also on the uh, inlet of the bore too, just to make sure that everything slide in there nice and smooth. I'm using petroleum jelly because I feel like that heat, that eventually heat will help dissipate this stuff and then this stuff should not harm the oil. But we'll find out if I spin a can bearing to pull this mug out, I'm done. I don't wanna do it no more. And then if you can see, um, I got my yellow mark on the actual tool and then I actually got my yellow mark on the, uh, on the block bore. So all I gotta do is line it up and then we're gonna slam it in. And I also made sure that that bearing sits inside of that lip first. You gotta make sure it's centered and then this cone on the back, make sure the back of your hand is on that cone. Nice, solid hit. Now I'm gonna take it out and check the alignment. Yeah, luck, I need to go in more. Forgot to add too, you're gonna need a, a little tool or something that you can bend. This is just a piece of aluminum welding wire. You want to see if it goes in that hole, which it does, but I think it need to go a little more. You probably can't see much of it, but uh, a mirror and a light goes a long ways when trying to line up that hole also. All right, guys, so I already got the first, the second one, and the third one installed and before um, I was taking this tool and I had the tool coming in uh, through the back side um, the whole objective of this tool is that you want to try to install the bearings um, with this piece right here this cone side um, farthest away from the bearing so now that we're gonna make our way to uh, the fourth and fifth main bearing or excuse me the fourth and fifth camshaft bearing now Instead of doing the tool this way, we need to flip the tool over and then run the tool through the front. Um, with doing that, you cannot run this tool through this bearing now. That, 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 that hole is too small, so you actually have to take this piece off and install this piece uh, right here in between basically um, the middle one and the fourth one. So let's make that happen. The last step is to make sure this camshaft works. Got my little bottle of Deer Park oil. That's right, they only they don't make water. Only water, they actually make water and oil. Matter of fact, I'm making mess oil. Look at that thing spin, fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that. 
pat mode perfect boy that's a good feeling to have brand new cam bearings and to be honest with you uh that was way easier than i thought all right fam that's gonna conclude this episode of installing camshaft bearings into my lq9 just a just a side note or overview note make sure that you get the right cam bearings that's generation two ch10 is generation one and again we use the lyle 18000 cam bearing installation tool it's a universal tool a lot of people talk trash about it because i guess they they, they don't know how to uh, operate it but as you can tell in this episode it won't that bad um i think summit racing sells a tool um there's another guy that manufactures a tool on ebay as well but at the end of the day i'm happy i learned something else new that i can apply to not only my car but anybody else that needs can bearings but most importantly we can continue on with the build next episode we're going to install the pistons the camshafts we're going to double check our clearances maybe or maybe not with that little thin strip of green i forget what it's called but you'll see it just watch the next episode and you'll know what i'm talking about see you later